Hey everybody, welcome to the episode 5 of the Turn and Burn podcast. I'm Jason with uh, JR Custom Designs and Rotoboss Rotary Attachments. Today I got with me Chris and Robert. Um, today we brought Chris, uh, Robert on to talk to us a little bit about himself and uh, how he got started and, and where he's at today with everything. So uh, if anybody has any questions during this, please feel free to, to shoot it in the comment section and we'll answer it as soon as we can. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, have Chris introduce himself, and then we'll have Robert take it from there. What's up, everybody? Uh, Chris, House of Lasers, also Thunder Laser support and training. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we're happy to have Rob on here today, and Rob has really made a mark for himself, uh, kind of the that, that nice gentleman with the, with the white goatee who, who is that guy he i shaved my beard off if you noticed yeah <laughs> santa claus on santa vacation claus. yep <laughs> he's so knowledgeable so so you made a name for yourself how did you get started well you know uh it's so a first inter introduce long, yourself yep somewhat of a long story chris um i'm robert kofed i own computer creations and um to to back up quite a ways, because I think it's important to, t to tell the whole story. My grandfather uh, was a huge influence in my life. And he always told me, you always want to have more than one option. Well, I had a corporate job for 40 years. I worked for a, a local electric utility in the operation side of the business with the linemen and dealing with design and uh, electrical systems, that kind of stuff. But I always had a side hustle. From the time I was 19 years old, I had something going on on the side. By the time I was 23, I owned and operated a taxidermy studio. So I'd go to work for the utility. Then I'd come home, go to the studio, work six or seven hours there. And I was always doing something else other than my corporate job. Back in 1994, that's when Computer Creations was born. So it's, it's been around for 30 years. And back wow. then, Computer Creations was a mobile photography studio where nice. my wife and my da uh, daughter and I would go to these different events. We'd photograph them. We'd print the uh, prints on site. It was just when digital photography was coming about and uh, did that for a while. And in 2000, I pretty much got away from the photography and went full bore into to woodworking and uh, had a CNC machine, did that for quite some time. And then right around when the pandemic hit, I, I, I uh, retired uh, right before the pandemic hit. And it was funny because at that point in time, we weren't sure how much money we we're gonna be able to live on. We had a pretty good idea, but we weren't sure. And right after I retired, I told my wife, I says, hey, I wanna order this laser. And it's gonna be about 1200 bucks. And she's like, you know, I'm not sure where we're at yet. So anyway, we, we ordered it and it was a diode, you know, it took me two months. It took me two months to learn how to use it and get it fired up because there was hardly anything back into, uh, you know, at the start of the pandemic uh, to, to know what to do. So it generated that, uh, found out within a couple of months that that 10 watt diode was just not going to do what I wanted it to do. It was just too slow. And at that point is when I stumbled onto the Thunder brand and uh, shortly ordered a, a Nova 24 after that. And kind of the rest is history. Um, been associated with doing laser work since the early, you know, since early 2020 and uh, really have pivoted my business before 2020. I was, had a full-blown woodworking shop, um, had all the tools that I needed. I could pretty much build anything that I needed to. I was doing a lot of custom work, custom cabinets, jewelry boxes, that kind of stuff. But I always wanted to be in lasers. Matter of fact, I wanted to put a laser on my CNC machine, but it was just not that good to do it at that point in time. And uh, yeah, then I started kind of getting away from the the wood, the full blown woodworking and more and more and more into the lasers. And what I found out is when I, when I retired and uh, I couldn't find anything that I needed on YouTube to help me learn how to use this diode laser, 
I decided, you know what, I, I've always wanted to do a YouTube channel. I'm going to give this a try. I love to speak in front of people. I did that in my corporate job for many, many years. And it's something that I enjoy doing. And so I started it with really no expectation of how big I was going to get or even if I was going to like doing it. And <laughs> no, when, uh, when about when was that? So that was that was like March of 2020. OK, so for, for the YouTube channel. Yeah. Yep. Which has grown exponentially by leaps and bounds, which is awesome. Yeah, it's, you know, we're, we're getting dangerously close to 30,000 subscribers. I'll have that probably middle of next month. Nice. And uh, nice. yeah, it, it, it's it's you know, it seems like there's there's several different styles in YouTube and I'm kind of that down in the weeds kind of guy. Some people love that. Some people don't. And so it's one of those deals where you got to kind of choose what you want to do. And um, yeah, so it's been good. And what's amazing to me, guys, and both of you <clears throat> will understand this uh, with creating content is some of my most popular videos <laughs> on my channel I know were, the, were the first ones that I ever did. Yeah. And they're still, I've got one video on my channel that's called, that's 10 tips and trips, uh, uh, tips and tricks about light burn. Right. And it's been number one on my channel from the day I released it. And, and almost four years later, it's wow. still number one today. Nice. <laughs> That's crazy. And what's crazy is you look at that. I, I tried to diagnose it. Why, why is that so popular? And you compare that to other content, right? right. And it's like, I don't see that. I don't see the difference, yep. but it's, it's been no, the, like said, when I released it, it went to number one and it's never come off that mark. And a lot of times yeah. it has to do with the, the tagline or something in the comp or the description yep. or who, who you tag during it, things like that. <laughs> has a lot to do with it too um, well, just, just uh, light burn tips and tricks i mean that's that's a huge title yeah 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 yep yep yeah, it's, yeah and, and, definitely. and we all know that the title and and kind of your <laughs> description verbiage yep. makes a big difference yeah oh yeah yeah but yeah well, awesome. so it's yeah so it's been it, it's been a, a a passion of mine i really enjoy it this last year I stepped up my game and got some pretty good uh, quality camera equipment, and uh, I migrated over to DaVinci Resolve for photo edit or for uh, video editing software, and that's pretty much you can take that as far as you want to go. But yeah. uh, so, so that's an interesting side of it that doesn't get discussed. So shooting the video is a very small portion of what we do. There is probably two to three times that work going into post making the video, whether it's, you know, cutting and editing and clipping and, and, you know, adding transitions and all that stuff. I mean, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of time and people don't realize what goes into it. They're happy to comment. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I remember the first, you know, probably 20 videos that I produced back in 2020, you know, they would take me a full day or better, you yep. know, just to get a 10 minute YouTube video, uh, you know, out there. And right. yep. there were still problems with it. Right. I was still learning. But it, yeah, it, it can take a huge amount of time. Well, that's like back when I first started. What was it? 2018, 2019. Um, and even up till about a year ago, like I would try to shoot everything in one <laughs> In one in one, one go take. because I didn't know how to I didn't know how to edit and what I could edit it was kind of crappy. Um like now I got one of my employees, he he does video editing and stuff, so he's the one that does all the, the new videos. But uh but yeah, I remember starting out one, if you look back at like JR Custom Designs is where it all started, and then I tried to mi I migrated most of it to, to the Rotoboss, but if you look at some of those videos, man, I was using some cheap 720p little fish eye, like those little, I, we talked about it before, but the little square um, PCBs with the camera on it, like you right. <laughs> using stuff like that to make videos. And it's just, it's just neat to see. Well, you um, don't know, you don't know. And, and yeah. until you start either getting critiqued or as you, you know, dive into 
you know, the depths of, of YouTube and creation, content creation, you start figuring it out pretty quick. Well, that's one thing I, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't put a lot of emphasis on early on was videos. Like I, I did a lot of stuff early on with, you know, instructional videos and things like that. But as far as like my brand, you know, I, I neglected a lot of that with videos and stuff like that just cause I didn't have time. Right. Um, so, I mean, social media is like a double-edged sword. I mean, if, if you do it right, you could do it good or you, everything kind of goes well, but if you don't do it right, then you kind of get so, what you get. <laughs> so Rob, you, you went from starting a YouTube channel and messing around with lasers and figure them out to training people. And now you have these twister trays for the thunder laser to help with the rotary tools. So, yeah, I mean, you can explain a little bit about uh, your, your training and, and how that trend. I'm, I'm sure it happened kind of like me. Hey, I see you're pretty good at this and I love your videos. How much is it? <laughs> yeah. How much yeah. For, for an hour of your time? Yeah, it's it certainly it certainly came organically. One of the things again that I true truly enjoy is is training and just communicating or trying to help people out. And um, so you know, I started that probably three years ago, and it initially started with just you know people that I either met through laser that said, "Hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me out?" And you know, I would go back and forth and. Then, you know, one thing led to two. Well, you help me here. Can you help me there? And I enjoyed it so much that I actually put it into my business model. And it's about uh, 15% of my, my bottom line. And I, I don't make a lot of money on it. But because I enjoy it so much, I try to do three or four training sessions a week. Um, and those are our sessions. Interesting statistic. I looked the other day. I've got about 250 one-on-one -on -one training sessions since I started. Wow. So, and, so not to not to to plug Thunder or anything like that, but are most of those Thunder people? Because I know we we as a, a tech and training side uh, will fall back on somebody like you, and your name comes up a lot when we're having somebody that's just struggling and right. yeah. and hasn't been able to get through the system, right? Yep. Uh, they're doing well and they're following everything, but they just want, they want it now. And you're, you've always been kind of, all right, let's Rob, Rob's a good guy, you know, <laughs> yeah. pay him a hundred dollars yep. or whatever it is and, yep. and go, go yep. talk to him. Yep. Yeah. I've noticed, I've noticed and got feedback from people too, is like the way you, the way you talk in your videos. Um, for me, it's not my preference. But you're very, you're very kind of, you're you're steady and you're you're concise. Like you you take time and you don't try to speed up your speaking. Yeah. Like it's it's you, down in the you, weeds, you just, guy. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you just you take you take that information and you put it out. To me, it's I don't I like the content, but I don't like the way it's presented just for me because that's I like quicker. I like yep. Yep. Like, hurry up, get, hurry up, get, to, get, to, yep. get to the point, yep. get to the point. Yep. Whereas you, you go through a lot of things, which for new users and stuff is really good because, um, like, they can kind of follow along. Because sometimes I'll find myself like, how do I do this? I'll pull up, like, YouTube or something, and I'll watch it, and I'll try to mimic it on my end. Um, so the way that you present it is really good for that, I think. And I, I have had some people mention mention the way that you do your videos. Um I haven't heard anything negative, but you know, it's just the way you do it. People can easily follow if they want to try to kind of keep up and do it themselves. Yeah. You afford that by the way you're, you're the pace of your speaking. Well, um, I don't even, I, I don't know Rob about you, but for me, I'm a simple guy, you know, I, it, and, and the, the more basic I can explain it, I think it's the easier it comes across. I mean, I, I, the criticism that I get now is like, man, your videos are so long, <laughs> but you can pause it and come back, you know, right. pause it, yep. figure it out, come back. I'm breaking it down to the, the very small details and stuff that you may not want to know, right. but you should really understand if you're going to be using a machine that's $15,000. Yeah. yeah. 
This yeah. isn't a printer. You know, this is this is a machine that can light your house on fire. Right. Exactly. So you might you might want to know some of these. these <laughs> Just these a few details. Well, right. Yeah. I, right. I'm so, the I'm the kind of guy that I want to I want to teach you the whys and hows and not just give you the answer because right. Right. you're going to come back to me three minutes later for another answer. And right. I'd rather, you know, it's kind of like uh, teach a person to fish instead of just providing the fish. It's a same concept. Yep. It's yep. one of those deals where, and let's face it, we've got a huge number of people that are coming into the laser industry that may have not done a lot of their homework. Right. And they mm -hmm. just don't know what they don't know. Right. And uh, they think it's going to be a, you know, I'm going to look at this thing for a couple of hours and I'll be able to master it. And that's going to be that. And it just isn't that way. And so well, a, lot of, a lot of people get confused with the whole printer because like Glowforge really screwed things up with that, you know, calling it a laser printer. So people think, oh, I just plug it in and it's a printer. Hit, yeah. hit start and then it goes. Well, yeah, it's not quite that there's, simple. There's no, there, <laughs> when you when you get into these higher dollar machines and even the Bolt, which isn't a high dollar machine, uh, you know, it, it's it's an affordable machine. It, it It's still not a plug and play. There's still no. a lot of settings that you need to learn and you have to you have to be the master of your tool, like an artist, you know, like, it, you know, like a welder. It takes him schooling to learn how to weld yeah i mean you're just taking electric and burning some shit together but <laughs> you know yeah. but to do it right and have it you know solid yeah. and structurally sound you got to know what you're doing yep. yeah you got to test and play with it and see what works and you the like lasers it, lasers huh whatever yeah <laughs> the well, lasers really not any that... different yeah, the minute you, you know, and I see this all the time during my trainings is a lot of people come to me and they go, they want to learn 16 things at once. Right. And the first thing that I tell them is, you know, we need to pick a couple of your favorite mediums and master right. those yeah. and don't move on until you do that. Because what I'm going to tell you to do in relations to wood is completely different compared to what I'm going to have you do in acrylic. Right. And if you try to do all of those at the same time, you never understand the nuances of the different materials that you work with. And so, once people so, understand, oh, I, you know, I see why, then they're off and running. But everybody's yeah. excited. They have ideas on what they want to do for this and that right. and the other. And yeah, it's so you just gotta so, you gotta get the basic mechanics down first. Yeah. Yes. So so I just bought a bolt. And I just finished the training academy, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a full wrap now. I'm just gonna do a full wrap. <laughs> <laughs> like like a lot of people don't understand that we have slowly stair stepped our way to that achievement, and it right. is an achievement. You know, there's a lot of things that go in. You just don't put it in there and okay, press some buttons and perfect full wrap. Yeah. You well, know, I mean. A lot of the Let's content that people surface. flat surfaces first, learn the machine and what it's supposed to do, and then let's move forward to the more complicated stuff. Yeah. Well, it's like the, you know, like I said, the you got to get the fundamentals first. Like jumping off into cups, like uh, somebody I talked to yesterday or the day before, <laughs> they just got their machine. They've already committed to a job. And they've never used either the laser or a rotary before. Right. And it's, and it's, I mean, it, ba it baffles. I mean, I understand, you know, they want to get their money back. They want to get going and everything, but you know, it just baffles me that people do that without, you know, kind of researching or yeah. And just like even research or talking to right. people like, Hey, you know, and you get the, the comments all the time too. I see that, like, how do I do I, this? Like, what are, what are, what setting what settings should I use? It's like, well, I, I've never driven a car before, <laughs> but I'm gonna be a Formula One driver. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I did, I did a training for for rotary stuff uh, with a lady uh, about a week or two ago, and it was kind of like what Robert said. She had all these different things that she wanted to learn how to do with it, you know. And I, we had a two hour time time slot. 
And I was basically like, look, we need to, we need to get the fundamentals first. Like, I understand that you want to do reps. I understand you want to do this and that, but you have to understand how the machine works and, you know, what settings to change and what based on the different materials and things like that. And like, she wanted to jump straight off into, this is another one that was I'd never done Tumblr stuff at all and jumped right into doing wraps. And, right. uh, it was just like, you know, we have to get the basics first because she had an yeah. old, I think it was a D80 or D90 or whatever for her truck. But, you know, and I'm sitting there walking her through how to do it. And then it was like, squirrel. <laughs> like we'd be talking about one thing and she's like, oh, but I, I want to learn this now. I'm like, well, we haven't even finished what we're talking about. <laughs> and, so, and, and and to be to be upfront, I'm, we're making fun. And we're being a little sarcastic and jo jovial about it, but we're trying to help people that might be watching it that there's steps to take prior to jumping in. Uh, you don't jump in the ocean if you don't know how to swim. Uh, you learn in a little kiddie pool first. And yeah, I mean, if we have to break it down that basic, let's let's swim in the kiddie pool so we can stand up. And then we can go into the big, the deep end, you know, let's, let's yep. take it step by step. And it, it, I mean, Rob, you'll agree, Jason, you'll agree that, that knowing what the machine is doing and why it does it will make you so much more successful. Huge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, well, I mean, it, you'll, you'll be all able the, to all these videos and, 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 and create so many different things that you never thought were possible just because you understand. I mean, I admire people's, ambition to, right. to do that stuff but it's just like like from like us me and chris i know robert you started around 2000 but like me and chris have been doing this i've been doing this since 2015 you know and we've built our technical expertise so to speak on how to do certain things like i can get something in the shop look at it and I can almost certainly figure out what I need to do to make it work just by looking at it, knowing the type of wood it is, knowing the type of acrylic, knowing the type of cup, the coating, all that different stuff. But it takes time to learn that. Um, and a lot of it's trial and error. And, and a lot of people, well, I don't want to waste money. I don't want to you know, ruin a cup. I don't want to do this. It's like, well, you're, you're you going to have to. You have to. Right. You have yep. to. Um, and like I've said before, is like I use spray paint. Like I have a 20-ounce tumbler. So if I'm doing a, a really intricate design or something and I want to make sure it works, I take my 20 ounce tumbler that's been engraved on God knows how many times and I'll just spray paint over it and then reuse it. So I have one cup in each size basically that I can test on before I actually do the final product. Um, and then of course the tape test is, is another good one. Um, but you know, learning how to do, those certain things like you're going to have to spend money. I know it sucks. We've all been there, you know, rubbing nickels together to, to try to, to make ends meet in the business or, or whatever, but you have to, you have to invest that into it or else you're constantly going to be trying to play catch up and, and learning as you go. And that's not when you want to, <laughs> not when you want to learn it, you know? So, I mean, I, I don't know like if you specialize in anything, but like myself, I do all custom stuff. So usually either repeat business or, you know, they've called everybody else that does engraving and they won't do it and I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, I don't like to turn things away for one, but one that with my experience, it allows me to be able to do that. And two, it helps build on that experience by kind of getting out of your comfort zone and, and learning new things and challenging yourself and, and things like that. But you just got to kind of be mindful of how you do that. Cause you don't like, if someone brings an heirloom to you, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't, you don't want to ruin someone's family heirloom by making the wrong call. Um, but you know, things yeah, like that, that is just it. Oh yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it just take it takes, it takes time and people just need to understand that. I mean, as bad as it sucks financially sometimes, I mean, you just have to like, I was telling this lady, yeah. she was wanting to do Stanley cups and we were testing on a dupe. I'm like, you understand that the size, the texture, the thickness of the material on it, all that stuff's going to be different. So even if you dial it in on this, 
it may, those settings may not work on that Stanley or Yeti or whatever it is. Um, so that's where it's good to either have the experience prior or get something to test on and, and uh, learn from. Well, yeah, someone, you're right there, says, Jason. Uh, just jump on him. Just, uh, um, just go. If you, unfortunately, if you companies... Room, talk, he's going to talk, <laughs> Rob. You just got to yeah. step on no, his I just, toes. I just wanted to hit a, hit a question real quick so, so we're not forgetting anything. But, yeah, unfortunately, Glowforge X tool make it look like anybody can do it. And that's what I was going to get at, too, is, like, all the influencers and stuff, Rob, maybe myself and Chris included, you know, they see us do this stuff so, so effortlessly that yeah. – they feel like that they can do it, which they can eventually. They can. It just takes but, a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Well, yeah, going back to what you were talking about, Jason, I'm the same way. I do nothing but custom work. I don't make tree, you know, things to sell. Uh, usually I have an order, um, you know, before I do it. But even today when I'm doing, you know, whether it's tumblers or flat work, whatever it is, I'm always ordering extra of, you know, those tumblers or whatever, um, right. yep. because even as many tumblers as I've done on occasion, for whatever reason, I will mess that up. And if I only ordered, you know, the hundred tumblers that I need and I mess one up, um, yeah. it can be a problem. So I'm right. always ordering a handful of this, that, and the other. And as painful as it is, it's, it takes a huge um, kind of risk out of the process because if you mess one up, it's no big deal. You've got another one or two here. And that's just a stress that you don't really need, right? <laughs> I mean, well, we've all one. been there where your customers say, okay, here, here are your, you know, here are your bottles and I don't yeah. have any extra. Your anxiety yep. goes through the roof no matter <laughs> how many times you've done that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And who wants to pay for JDS shipping? So oh, we, we, just exactly. order, we just order it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's exactly yeah, I right. Gonna well, say I, just, I was going to say uh, just, just from the, from the extra order, I just did a, uh, a pretty large uh, uh, kind of a wood tray with the slate insert from JDS. Yeah. Yep. I did a, a huge amount of those and I ordered like, I don't know, 15 or 20 extra just to have, cause I didn't have those. And I used, um, I think 14 of those extras out of the 15 or 16 extra because there were defects in the product. Now, oh. JDS is going to make it right. But if I wouldn't have done that, I would have, you know, had to wait for them to ship me more. And so yeah. that's the other reason. Not that JDS has, you know, most of their stuff is incredible. But I don't care where you're getting your, your materials from you want to put a little buffer into your orders, either from a mistake that you've made, or maybe you want to try something different. Uh, or a lot of times that customer calls and says, Hey, I miscounted. I need three more. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've had that. I've had that happen before I, I place an order and I happen to get extras. And then the customer calls and says, Hey, can I get an extra five or 10 of them? It's like, yep. I kind of well, play I, it. I play, I play it down. Like, uh, I'll have to see if I can get them, and you know, because you know, I mean, I I don't want to I don't want to over promise and under deliver. I'd rather under promise and over deliver. Right. Um, well, I mean, so, I'm I'm probably not as stocked as Jason is, but I'm sure I'm stocked like like you are, Rob. Yep. I have I have extras. I always buy extras, and I have two shelves filled. So that's it. Maybe somebody if somebody comes in and plans like their you know for their anniversary like I do. So about five minutes before dinner. <laughs> Hey, I need I need that cutting board. Yeah, I've got one. I'm on I my can... way. Right, Rob, yeah, what you got? <laughs> so, yeah, so I have it. You know, I'm I'm ready to go in case that that last you know a buddy or somebody needs something real quick. I have it. Well, the good yeah. thing, like for at least for flat stuff, um, like if you're unsure of something, at least for me, basically what I'll do is if I'm really unsure how it's gonna burn or how it's going to turn out, usually I'll, I'll err on the side of caution and I'll use a lesser power or something or a different speed or something. That way, if it's not right, I can go over it again. You can sneak make, up on make, it. Yep. Make it a little deeper, make it a little darker by changing some settings around or whatever. Because um, if you go whole hog on it and just 
dig into right. it it's and not. it's not right, you, you're done. And you're the done, same with cup. Back up. Yeah. Same with cups. Like every every cup we do, whether it's one or a thousand, always I always do a test, uh, a tape test to make sure it's coming out right. Um, whether it's a cup I have on the shelf that I could just easily grab if I mess up or not, I usually, and that's kind of the other person that does our laser work, uh, in the shop. I I have her do the same thing. It's like, I don't care how long it takes. If it takes an extra 10, 15 minutes, do a test, make sure it's right. Um, because I mean, it's, you don't want to do rework and you don't want to waste money and spending an extra 10 or 15 minutes to do a test, even though it's one cup, could potentially save you ten to fifty dollars, depending on what what the item is, you know. So it just for me it 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 works that way. It's it's better to do a test regardless of how comfortable you are, because like I've been doing this for the rotary stuff for probably six or seven years, and I still do a tape test almost every single time, because um, so, you Jason, you just never know. Jason, throw that that last comment up. Oh. So, so this is pretty interesting. Like, yes, it was around, and I don't disagree, but the the content that was available for lasers was non-existent. Mm-mm, it did nothing. not exist, and it was in and in retrospect, I'm thinking it's a good thing that it was guarded. The information was guarded, and it kept the industry. Um, not as flooded, not, not as definitely not as flooded as it is now. I mean, the, the ease of finding information and the ease of getting a machine is totally different than even, you know, you're talking 20, 24, right? Uh, 2004. We were talking, what, 2015 when we started, there was still zero information. Nobody was letting it out of the bag. No, yeah, it wasn't that, talked that. about. Uh, uh-huh. Very guarded secrets, especially for fiber. Fiber, forget about it. They just they, <laughs> they they literally mess with you on Facebook groups. Like, yeah, look at this uh, this polymer magazine that I have. It's you know I'm engraving it red just with settings. No, it was dyed underneath. You paint it black. You know yep. <laughs> they they were just screwing with people. Uh, you know, but looking back and, and looking at how flooded the industry is. Um, uh, I, I liked it back then. I mean, I mean, back then it was we were the content. <laughs> yeah, for, I for, mean, when for Rob, a lot of when it. Rob started, yeah. he was probably one of the first to come on board. When I started, I mean, there wasn't a lot of YouTube channels for. Uh-uh. I mean, you had Russ, it. you had Russ Sadler, which was where I learned a lot of stuff from. Right. Yeah, yep. we all did. Um, we all did. <laughs> but he's but he's like an in the weeds kind of guy so if you're not ready for an hour and a half or two hour video on how to do uh, a dot test yeah <laughs> or something yep. the, he's not the guy for you but you can learn a, a, an infinite amount of knowledge by watching his videos and i learned a lot from him i'd, I'd sit there for hours just watching his videos yeah, he's, and that's he's, and that's really all we had like i don't i don't understand the question like we were lucky i, I wouldn't say we were lucky <laughs> he does talk a lot he, d- he does. And he's, he's yeah. gotten more than in the weeds. Like he's, he's now not making as much content, but commenting on other people's right. creations yep. and trying yep. to prove them wrong. So he, I mean, he's in the final stages of, of, of this stuff. And now he just has points to prove and a knowledge to prove. Yeah. Which but I mean, either way, I mean, the, the knowledge, though. the knowledge he has is over and above what, most people need but like for myself i'm a very technical person i like to know like the ins and outs of everything on how it works why it works so for me it was really good but you can also pick pieces of what he does and says in his videos and just use that knowledge at some point right like uh like your like your dot size or you know um the curve you know, cutting acrylic on how to get it dialed in to where it doesn't leave a, a smoke ring around the top, you know, he, he millimeter or two. One of the first ones. I mean, I, I remember when I first started, before my machine even came, I was trying to watch some of his videos. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And then we had we started doing our videos around 2018, I think. Yeah, I don't, I, somewhere I, around I, there. 
see when, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was for the lack of information where, where it pushed me to start mine. Yeah. And, and just a general understanding of it where, you know, a lot of people just didn't get it. It doesn't click, but you know, obviously for us, uh, it did and we shared it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, for me, like sharing the knowledge is, is important. Um, cause no, I mean, even like some people that are around here that do laser stuff by me, I mean, they stop by the shop. We talk shop. I'm not afraid to share information because I mean, there's, there's enough to go around really. And, right. you know, I, I'm more, I'm more driven to help people than I am myself in a lot of ways. Um, to see someone else succeed or, or learn something is, you know, satisfactory satisfaction for me um and i think you know just from knowing robert i mean i feel he's the same way as far as his information i mean obviously at some point you got to monetize your knowledge because otherwise otherwise people are just going to take advantage of it um right and you know but like doing these podcasts and things like that we put out information you know some of it may be irrelevant in in the current state but at some point maybe you can look back and be like, Oh yeah, I remember them talking about that or, or something like that. So just, you know, having a, a free flowing uh, source of information, um, I think is key. And, and like when we first started, everything was guarded, like everything. <laughs> yes, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I mean, I did want to discuss a little bit about the trays that Rob's making. Yep. Because, yeah. So, because yep. I mean, I've done the lack of anything and put it on the crumb tray on the bolt. I've done the drop down brackets, no fence, Jason. But, you know, if I want to go from different rotaries and I don't want to have to deal with the drop down brackets on, you know, a fixed machine or a fixed rotary, it seems like you have a great solution. Yeah, you know, a, a little bit of background about how those, uh, the Roco twister tray came about. First of all, Roco, it's the first two letters of my first name and the first two letters of my last name. So that's where Roco came from. Twister, I figured, you know, rotaries, that kind of stuff. My wife actually came up with, with a lot of that. But initially, when I got the bolt, and it was doing such a phenomenal job of engraving. I do a lot of boxes that are about six inches deep, a lot of pet memorials, that kind of stuff. And currently the bolt wouldn't do that with that 4.1, you know, uh, inches of Z depth. So originally that's kind of where it started. And once I got some, some mock-ups done and I put my rotaries in it, it just, the light went on and went, wow, I'm, you know, I'm keeping this. And this is, this is what they look like for anybody that, that, that hasn't seen a tray. This, this is the one that goes in the bolt. I've got one that I just released uh, on Monday that goes in the Nova 24 that really makes it nice. But. Hey, Rob, when, when's the one for the 63 come out? Well, here's the deal. Uh, check this out. I, what I did, uh, 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 Chris is I made brackets for the 24 tray so you can drop it in between the slots for any of the Nova series. That's true. I mean, you just take out the, uh, yeah, the I, you just take out nine slots and you drop right. it in. Yep. Oh. That would work perfect. Yep. And then, you know, you have, this would be if, you know, you got the talon mounted up. And so typically the, the beauty of this is, is because the tray indexes to the front of the of the frame on the bolt, I can just take this, use this hole in the middle, and just drop this whole assembly into the yeah. into the bolt, pull the tray forward, pin it, and you're good to go. And I, it's been really repeatable with anything that you can you know that you can clamp in. And Jason was gracious enough to help me with these clamps when I didn't have a talon, and uh, it's working out real well. And so a lot of people now are just, I've got a mount that hangs on the wall. Matter of fact, you can see it right there. Yep. Um, I've got them hung on the wall. So I just take it off the wall, drop it into the into the laser, plug it in, make sure it's uh, indexed up front and away we go. So, you know, if you're interested, um, my online Shopify store is just computercreations.online.com. 
and uh, you can go in there and, you know, you can order all the different trays. I've got the uh, different blocks that are up. The Nova 24 tray is on sale until uh, the first bunch are sold out. And yep. I've got, so, I'm offering free shipping on that. So, and, and this isn't, this isn't some cheap steel that's going to rust. This is made out of aluminum, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's eighth inch aluminum, H5052 aluminum. And it's very uh, rigid as Jason can attest. It's, it's, you know, you it's won't rigid. It won't rust. Nope. Uh, yeah, the, the only can, but, but the only con concerns I had when it first came out was the fact like where the corners aren't welded, where they're just pinch folded. Um, that was my there. my that was my initial concern, but you know after using it, I mean it's the thickness of it. What is that through two mil, three mil? Yeah, it's point like one two five. It's eighth inch. So yeah. It's, yeah, eighth yeah. inch. So I mean it's it's, it's really stout, you know and can't wait to see the 24 one because i mean i think that one will be uh good as well like i used the the tray and i told robert before i was like i hate to admit it but i think you i think you got me you know <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then i hate myself for not coming up with it first but yeah. um but yeah i mean it's like the drop downs or the tray they both work the same as far as what they do but the tray is definitely much easier to put in and take out this is um, recorded. This is recorded. Hey, you know, <laughs> I, no, I'm, it, I'm not. I'm not afraid to admit defeat. You know. Yeah, you got but, it. And you know, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a price difference, but for the Huge, convenient yeah. for the convenience, I mean, I think the tray is nice. Like in my trailer, especially when I do events. I mean, I'm swapping rotary flat, rotary flat all day long, going back and forth. And with this, it makes it really easy. Um, so I mean, not. Yeah, it's a better mousetrap. I mean, they, they they both work well, but you know the tray I think is is a little bit better mousetrap in that regard as far as you know how it how it works and um the fact you know, obviously you can hang it on the wall, which makes it nice um and keep everything up out of the way and it, it secures really well. Um, I noticed like the we talked about the holes in the front, um. Have you have you had any issues with that or any concerns with people? I, I I haven't, but I will tell you, and something you might want to try, Jason, that I that I that I kind of proven on these Nova Twenty Four trays, because the 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 the, the holes for the Nova Twenty Four tray were inconsistent enough. I didn't want to go there. Yeah. What I did was I I I put uh, neoprene tape underneath the flanges, and so. During my testing on the 24 tray, uh, it's not pinned down or secured in any way. And I did some pretty rigorous, you know, tests uh, from a speed perspective on the 24. And that tray does not move with that neoprene tape. And I think you could probably do that with the with the tray on the bolt and you'd be fine and you wouldn't have to pin it. Yeah, I definitely. So, I definitely so probably the, give it a shot. Pin. The pins on the tray, I'm not too concerned about what I would like to see, Rob. And I don't even know if it's possible, is is some type of notch out so that you can put the honeycomb right over it and leave it in there. Yeah, you know, the the way my the way the current trays are, Chris, if you enlarge those two holes, right. Uh, you, you could the, the holes able, that yeah, I'm you, providing right fine, now are yeah. just slightly smaller, but here's Here's the problem. kind of the reason why I didn't do that is I wasn't sure if, you know, that tray was going to set perfectly flat to where you were, you know, you get some kind of a cock, uh, cock right. uh, honeycomb and then your focus would be screwed up. And so I just wasn't ready to go there. Got it. Yeah. Plus, I mean, if you have the rotary mounted in there. Yeah. If you have, have the rotary the, mounted, then sure. it's, it'd be, it'd, obviously you can't do it. Yeah. Because taking it yeah. out, like it's 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 really convenient to have it in there, and secured, and then like mm -hmm. like like for me, I just reach in, I grab the crossbar, mm -hmm. pull it out, pull it right out. Hang, right. It, hang, hang it on the wall, put my tray or my bed in, and then vice versa, grab it off the wall, throw it in there, yeah. pull it to the front. I put the pins in as best as they'll go because the holes don't yeah. line so, up. So so you guys are you guys are gonna laugh, but I have a hybrid of both of yours. Uh oh. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> 
Well, he, t- he probably took the mounts and then put a piece of aluminum and attached it to the drop downs. Yep, that's exactly yep. what he did. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. See, diamond, you, there you diamond go. plate, baby. I was going to say that, that was probably out of an old toolbox. Yep. <laughs> no, and that's one, that's, that's well, one thing you can do with the drop downs, but yeah. Yep. But yeah. Well, you know, the other thing that, that's nice about those trays, and again, it's kind of how it started is because I've got so many adjustment slots in the bottoms of those trays, when I'm doing my pet memorials or my deeper uh, things, I can set all kinds of jigs, you know, alignment uh, blocks, that kind of stuff, and be able to take some, you know, one thing out, put it right back in and snuggle right. it up against things that are secured with those, yeah. with those uh, no, I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to get a bolt one for sure because I would, I would use it personally. Okay, we'll hook you up, Chris. <laughs> uh, just send me. Yeah, a they're list. yeah, they're they're nice. I like them. Yeah, I, I yeah, have a so Thunder credit card. Just send me a bill. And I don't care if it's. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't care if I'm it's not worried recorded. about it, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not but, worried about it. It's one of, one of those deals. So yeah. So anyway, that's where that is, and it's going. You know, it's well made. It's uh, I've got a company making them for me that are that are sixty miles away. So I have complete control on kind of the quality and it is, it's a good quality product. They're yeah. not cheap. You know, I, it's one of those deals that I was going to make a quality product or I wasn't going to do it. And so that's where we're no. at. And, and so far I think we're okay. No, yeah, I noticed, I noticed, and I put out in my video I did recently uh, between the, the version one and version two, the, the color, the metal change, did you change the type of metal? No, you know what that was initially, um, the, the kind of the, uh, matte finish is, uh, where it was deburred, um, because the alignment guides are a single line cut completely through the aluminum. Yep. Uh, I, I wanted them to go ahead and deburr it. And they, I ordered a, a, a one order that wasn't deburred just to see how much more work it was going to be for me, for me to do that because it costs yep. money to do, to de- deburr it. But yep. there's no doubt in my mind after having both, um, we're going to deburr the rest. Yeah. Anything going no, I will, I will yeah. tell you if you haven't got it already, uh, it's called a skiving tool. You probably have heard of it. Maybe, maybe I don't not. Think I have. Um, but it's a little, it's like a small screwdriver. It's got a hooked tip on it that's kind of curved and, and sharp on one side and it's made for metal. I mean, we use it, we use it for plastic, but you could take it and just run it right around the hole and it takes yeah. that, that sharp edge off. Uh-huh. So if you got any that weren't done, you could easily uh-huh. do that. And they're, they're really cheap and they got different blades for doing different types of stuff with. Um, but it's, it's a really quick and easy. I mean, it's just so, literally, literally just ream the hole and it's done. Done. So Rob, I'm going to make a promise to you live on air that if, if I have one of your trays, it's going to be the first mirrored. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. You're going to, you're going to polish it. I'll, I'll polish it to a chrome finish, aluminum chrome finish, uh, and, and post about it. Cause that, oh, that would yeah. be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I Man. wanted to, th- this place that I'm having them made, they do anodizing as well. And I, I'm going to have one anodized and it's, it's real close to the Thunder Blue. Oh. Right. But it's one of those deals where I didn't want to go down there because how many anodized of what color? And of course, that's just more. And more how, how much does it change? Is it inconsistent and all that? Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah. I don't blame you. Blue is a very I, hard color to get. Like it, master, oh, yeah. Because if you go a little too much or a little too long or a little too little, it'll it'll change the color drastically. No, Jeff, don't do it, Jeff. <laughs> I'm doing it. Jeez. Uh, we we want to see anything. it, Jeff. <laughs> so, send me a picture, bud. <laughs> so the question: uh, Are the holes in the bolt inconsistent from the manufacturer? Um, the 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 pins, the registration pins on all of the machines are built and and pinned for each machine yep. so they are inconsistent they are proprietary to that machine yeah so they're all yeah, adjusted and that's what I noticed. And yeah so originally what i did chris is you know i've got the you know just the the quarter 20 carriage bolts 
um, that will fit on any of them because there's not right. that much slop. But the minute we went to the regular, uh, you know, the, the 3D printed print pins, which is <clears throat> quicker, faster, easier. But I really believe after the testing I've done on the Nova 24 tray, I think you could put in some eighth inch neoprene uh, tape uh, underneath mm -hmm. that bolt tray. And I think you would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely get a shot when I get, when I get mine, yeah, but also like, me, like we talked, I'm, I'm going to make some of those clamps that I was talking about to, yeah. that can sandwich it between the bar yeah. and the actual uh, tray to hold it in place and just have them like on a thumb screw or something quick and easy to, to put on and take off yeah. and see if that, see if that helps. Cause my, my concern with that, and I don't know if you've tried it, but if you set it up and then you go to put something in and you kind of bump it a little hard or something like that, does it move? No, it's, it's pretty well planted. It, it surprised it? me. Yeah. It surprised me. It's, it's, you can't physically move it from left to right, uh, without a tremendous now, amount of pressure. Right. Now, is that something that you're going to start doing yourself? The, they, they, yeah, they could, they, the, the ones that I've sent out so far have the neoprene tape underneath. Okay. Nice. Nice. And, and uh, just because it looked like to me, number one, without that neoprene tape, you just had aluminum to aluminum mirror, and there was just no way that was going to work. But yet I didn't have a way to reliably secure it other than what you were talking about, Jason, with the with the little C-clamps. Yep. Um, but but after playing with this neoprene tape, I, I think I'm considering g going forward to offer that on the bolt tray as well. Uh, especially if you've got places where the holes are inconsistent and you can't get them pinned. Right. I think that's your answer. I really do. Well, the problem I can see with the bolt would be the fact that it's, it has a powder coated finish, which is very slippery. Yeah. Um, versus the Nova 24 where it's just a raw aluminum. Aluminum. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've it got some, I've, I've got, it. I've got some tape and I can, I can try it and see what what. what yeah, give it a do. try and let me know. I'm going to try it um, online. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I I've got probably close to 200 trays out there now, and I, literally I've had not one person indicate that there was a problem there. But yeah. if if there is, I think that neoprene tape. You know, you're going to lose a little bit of your Z, but it's an eighth of an inch, so it's not that big a deal. Yeah. But um, I think if if you've got alignment issues going on that that may be something i'd try it for me jason if you would let me know what you think oh yeah well, like jeff's like jeff's talking about the br brute force and putting the pins in like on mine i got one hole lines up perfectly the other hole is a little bit skewed to the left and up so and with oh. the pins pins being stair stepped i usually push it into the second step and it wedges and then yeah. I don't have any issues with it. it. Yeah. So Rob, but, you're, you're, you're thinking that taking a unibit, just opening up that hole a little bit will allow you to adjust yep. it. I, yep. I like the idea of the neoprene and it's, it's just going to stick there, especially yep. when you have the weight of the rotary tool on top of that. It, it's not right. going yeah. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. No. I, no. I know, like I said, I've, I've spent a pretty considerable amount of time on the 24, uh, and it's not my 24. I don't have a 24 in my shop. I, I've got a, a, a fellow uh, creator that's got a 24 in the same town that I've done. So I've, they were gracious enough to just let me do what I needed to do to prototype and test. And I've spent a considerable amount of time over there doing that. And I'm very confident in the the tape for the 24 for sure. So which is nice because you don't that's just one less thing you got to worry about. You set it in, you pull it forward and away you go. Yeah, yeah, you do. I think you definitely, you definitely got a winner with it. Um, I'm just glad Jeff is still responding. That means he's not polishing his. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna send me a picture when he's all done. He's no. probably he's probably responding in between putting the the uh, wax you need on, to the, on the. You need to expedite that, Rob. I want to be the first one with a, a nicely there, polished. There you go. Woman. Well, <laughs> both both yours and Jason's are in the mail tomorrow. So Hold on. I got my mother's aluminum polish. Oh, here. there you go. Oh, I am ready to go. <laughs> I don't I don't have that much time on my hands. <laughs> Neither do I, but I'm gonna make it. <laughs> You're gonna make it, yeah. It'll be But no, I mean the, I think the anodizing would be, would be a good that, touch. Man. And even yeah. even if the colors are a little bit off, because like especially around the holes and edges, they tend to get darker quicker. Right. When they when they anodize it, 
Um, but even with that, I mean, I don't it's think you'll scratch. have it. I mean, it, it will scratch. It will have issues. Yeah, It'll I mean, but defects. if it's raw metal, do what you want with it. Here it is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. I mean, if it's yeah. cost prohibitive, then I wouldn't do it. But, you know, if it doesn't cost too much to do it. Well, I, I know, would say that Rob has has spent the money in the manufacturing side and the material right. side. And there's no there's no more room to make it affordable. Right. So yeah. the anonymization would be and put it over the edge, I'm sure. Yeah. It, it's uh, one of those deals where, and you know, some people will pay for that. Matter of fact, one of the first trays uh, <laughs> that got received on the 24 side, they they reached out and said, Hey, would you be offended if I anodized this? And I said, No, right. that'd be fantastic. Send me some pictures, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, it's just that the minute you start ordering one offs, it gets expensive. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not doing them in a batch, you're going to yeah. pay through the nose to get them. Yep. I've, been, I've been down that road. <laughs> I think I think mirrored and then fiber lasered with some graphics on it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, if, you, if you've got some good settings for aluminum, let me know. Oh, yeah. I got them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got them. Use, use a UV. You'll get a nice dark engraving. Yeah. A little, little bit of time wasted, but yeah. Yeah. But what what is it's just time. That's we got right. plenty of it. We got plenty of it, right? Lots of time. You don't you don't have time to polish it? No. All right. Because pol polishing it means physical labor and I'm not all oh, that's about true. that. That's well you got true. employees, Jason. Well, yeah, but I would never <laughs> I, I would never have them do anything I wouldn't do. So Oh, there you go. Uh like I get out and sweep the floor just like everybody else. <laughs> I the only thing I regret is I don't I don't get my hands on rotaries as much as or if really at all compared to what I used to. Um but you know There you go. It co cost some doing scroll business. work on it. That that's a good idea. Jeff's gonna do some scroll work. Yeah. So but yeah. Good. Endless possibilities with that. Yeah. Oh absolutely. And if you guys don't know, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the links down here to uh Rob's computer creations uh, website and his Facebook page. If you want to check out his stuff, yeah. Uh, if you've take got a look. any questions, reach out. I'd be happy to answer. You know, any questions you have. Um, yeah. So that would be great. I sure appreciate it. Awesome. Well, we're coming up on our time, but uh, throw in you your got anything, you, questions, comments, concerns. Anybody have any enough. questions or anything? Let us know. Now's your chance. If we go a little bit over, I think that's that's fine with me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, we got 16 viewers right now, so um, yeah, ask away. But uh, other than that, do you have any? Are you working on anything else or? Yeah, you know, I've got a. Or? I'm working with uh, with uh, 85th and Pine, uh, Catherine and Brandon over there. Yep. They've got a a, a a new service being launched on April 30th called Laser Design Club. And I'm working with them. I'm doing a, a light burn video series for them. That's nice. going to be part of their part of their uh, service. And so I've got some uh, external content that I'm creating for 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 them. And I'm I'm working on that right now. So that's great. Um, uh, one thing I love to do is talk about light burn. So that's right. Yeah. Down my the week. So yeah, I mean, uh, that's going to be go check it on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, laserdesignclub.com is where it's going to be, and I think they're going to launch on uh, April 30th. And so if you're interested in something like that, they're going to have uh, – I'll have the Lightburn course in there. They'll have – I'm sure they've uh, got other creators that are going to be doing different types of that kind of content on different topics. Um, there'll be all kinds of different – it's going to be kind of a uh, one-stop shop type of deal but you won't be able to see anything until the 30th. So, uh, go so, check out. uh, kind of like speaking of train, what's that? Like a subscription based. Yeah. Yes. I believe so. Yep. Brilliant. So speaking of training and stuff, um, are you no, still uh, doing training or do you have any way? I am. Can get a yeah, hold of you, you know, uh, no, you know, it's one, I, I, I take about three to four, uh, sessions a week. They're one hour train, uh, trainings. They're a hundred dollars an hour. Um, and you know, what I like to do, 
what I really enjoy about the training part is you never know if you're going to do just basic stuff or, you know, advanced stuff. And so um, if you need some help there, you know, hit me up on my Facebook business page. We can schedule something. I don't have a schedule posted. My, my schedule's so dynamic at this point that I, I'm, I'm doing it kind of old school just when I can fit it in. And so, yeah, so I'm, I'm not doing a lot of it, but I'm, I'm doing some of it and I will continue to do it. I'm about one to two weeks behind typically. And so uh, how can, how can people reach out to you? Do you want to drop yeah, a link so in if the you chat? Just, yeah. Just, uh, just uh, get on, uh, go to my Facebook business page, computer creations, send me an email at computer creations uh, at charter.net. There's lots of ways you can get a hold of me, get a hold of me on Facebook um, send me a message on messenger. Typically I'm, you know, responded to just about everybody, but, um, uh, you know, it, it, uh, some of the more fun things I like to do from a training perspective, and you guys see this on, on the, the forums all the time where you have somebody that's just absolutely terrified to turn on their, their laser. They might, might purchased yeah. it, you know, a year ago and it's yep. sitting in their garage and they're just, they just can't get over that hump. Um, those are the kind of people I enjoy working with, uh, you know, and you, you take them and then, you know, three weeks later, they're, you know, starting to do stuff. And it's, it's pretty rewarding. And from my perspective to do that, or oh, maybe you've got, maybe you've got a real, you know, you're thinking of a project, but you don't know how to approach it. You don't know how to set it up in light burn or what, what it might take in your laser. Um, oh. I enjoy those as well. Absolutely. Uh, so let's see. You got one question. Uh, what's the max weight the Talon Chuck can hold? Um, well, that would be subject to you know the length of it mainly. Um, I mean, I've done the two and a half to three pound glass beer mugs without any issues. Um, if you get much longer than that, like we have two separate um locking mechanisms, we have the actual protractor lock mechanism. And then with the kit that you get with the uh, the rotary, there's actually a replacement thumb screw that takes the place of the the grub the pivoting grub screw on that same side. So if you need to actually hold it more to keep it from tilting, you can replace that grub screw with a thumb screw and add an extra uh, a second tensioning device. Um, but the way that the chuck is designed, the the pivot of the the head is actually off center so it's it's about two-thirds of the way up so your your weight is slung down low so it's less likely to be able to pivot so it's not centered because if it was centered it would allow it to pivot with less weight so it's 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 off center to allow it to handle more weight without moving and then in addition with those two options for for locking it in place now as far as the jaws go um there's several there's several different sets of jaws that come with it or not jaws, but the, the rubber uh, pads that come with it that you can mix and match and, and see what works best for the object you're doing. Um, and then there's also, if you get something that's too heavy, uh, there is provisions for a arm or a support arm that can be attached to the rail to assist and things like that. Um, but I mean, it, it would be pretty drastic to get something that it wouldn't hold um, but as far as a weight, I don't know an exact weight for it. Um, bowling you pins. Go. You got your bowling, work cut out for you. Bowling pins. Um, I've actually so we actually have an. Well, with the with the adapters that I'm I'm coming out with, um, they're basically extensions that extend the jaws away from the face of the rotary about an inch and a half to two inches, and with that the the teeth are serrated so you can actually grip onto stuff wooden things or whatever and plus you can add your rubber bumpers to the end of it to make that extended out further so if you're doing like something small like a shot glass and you don't want to worry about the head hitting the the um the chuck then that spaces it away to allow you to do stuff like that um but but as far as bowling pins Obviously, I've never done, done one, and you know it could be done. You may need support for that, just because how awkward it is and would be to hold. I can, um, I can, I can attest that I've done one on a junior. Yep. 
Um, and then can I add a talent to a Rotoboss or Junior? Uh, yes. So we have a video on YouTube. Um, I can actually drop a link in the comments to it. There is a video on how to set that up, and it basically just replaces the end piece on the slave wheel side with the bracket that holds the chuck. Um, and that can be adapted however needed to, uh, to make it work. And also it works with the ascend, which is originally what it was, uh, designed around or to work with. Um, and then we also have an extension block for the, for Galvo and for, um, for the, the ascend or the junior or whatever that raises it up a little bit. So if you have something that's a really unique shape and you want support on it, it actually lifts it up so you can actually get that. Um, cause there was a lady, Holly, Holly had th that issue and she made up her own little, uh, support wheels. Um, but there is a bracket that is available to extend it up a little bit, uh, if you need to. Yeah, Tom, just let me know. Um, yeah. Anybody got any last questions before we, we head out of here? Sorry for the Facebook users. I don't know who you are um, on here. But uh, I'll, I'll make sure to reach out to you on, on the actual uh, video itself if you need anything else. Um, so, yeah. So that's, it looks like that's probably going to be it. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Like I said, at the bottom of the screen, you got the, the links to uh, Robert's website and Facebook page. Check them out. Check out his trays. Um, if you need help with anything, let him know. Uh, I'm sure I he think, can help uh, you out, fit it, fit it into your schedule. But I uh, think one of our, our topics for, for next time is something that... Uh, rob brought up which is something that i ran into when i did a on-site visit is the comfort level of people using their own machines yep. um so maybe we can do a, a discussion of that and something to look forward to for next time is is overcoming the fear of using your machine yep and that that leads into the next thing what i was going to say is if anybody has any suggestions of things that they'd like to see or hear have us talk about because eventually um, we'll probably do like a light burn session where we're talking about different features of light burn, things like at uh, the, the thunder lasers. Um, you know, all of us use thunder lasers, obviously, but, um, you know, I've had pretty much everything that's made except for AP and Laguna. So, I mean, I, I have a, a little bit of knowledge on all those. So we'll definitely start getting into kind of um, addressing light burn questions and concerns and issues and as well as, as thunder nuances and things like that, that, that people have there questions. But no if you have nuances. anything, uh, no what's say? There, ain't, there ain't no nuances. Well, no, just <laughs> like, like a lot of people that have the Anova, they get the bolt and they're still running it 0.08 on their line interval. Yeah. And they're, and they're having to defocus like crazy to keep from getting, uh, spaces and dead spaces and stuff yeah, and just things like that where you know the beam size is different you know just going over thing, nuances like that not negative things because I mean there's not <laughs> there's not there's not too many negative things to, no, to speak no. of just differences in the machines and how they work and and, and all that stuff um, yeah this thing's pinging at me telling me to get off <laughs> uh, thank good content tonight Hope to meet Robert in a few weeks. Awesome. Are you coming down to uh, ISA, Robert? No. Oh, okay. You're gonna be at ISA. Yeah. I gotta put up with you again. Yeah. If anybody, <laughs> if anybody's gonna be at ISA in Orlando uh, in two weeks in April, um, feel free to hit us up. We'll be at the Thunder booth. You'll be able to to talk to us, see our stuff, see how it works. Um, well, not just mine, but Thunder's obviously, but. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so if you're in the, in the area, you want to stop by, feel free. I don't know what booth number they're at, but just look for the thunder banner. I'm sure it'll be hanging up high so you'll see it. But, uh, yep. but, uh, but yeah, I'll we'll be, be there, there early, so. early Tuesday. I'll be there setting up and getting ready to go. So yeah, I'll be there Wednesday, but that'd be awesome. But yeah, so, uh, 
Uh, Robert, you got anything, any last minute kind of closing? Yeah, I just wanted to thank you, Jason and uh, Chris, for allowing me to come on and uh, tell my story. I really appreciate it. And uh, I think this is great. Chris? Absolutely, sir. No, no. Thanks, guys, for or everybody, ladies and gentlemen, for, for joining us. And we'll see you on the next one. All right. Yep. Thanks, Robert, for coming out. I really appreciate you, you take, taking the time to uh, sit down and talk with us and, and let us know a little bit about your story and your history and what you got coming and what you got out there right now. Um, Chris, as always, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, I hope this this uh, this podcast was was worth it as far as information and things like that. And as always, uh, we're all available on many social media platforms and emails and things like that. So if you have any questions about anything, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to help you. Um, but other than that, uh, have a good night. We'll, pro we'll probably have another podcast in a few weeks. Uh, stay tuned. We'll let you know when that's happening. And uh, again, let us know if you have any, any inputs to uh, what you'd like to see in the future. Um, other than that, everybody have a good night. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh, there you go. <laughs>